this movie was almost called Deadpool and Friend. And that would have been so much more on brand. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today our movie in the middle is Deadpool and Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine is the third movie for the Merc with a Mouth and his introduction into the MCU, in which he must save his universe and timeline with the help of a certain triple clawed buddy. It stars Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, Emma Corrin, Matthew McFadden, and Peggy the Dog as Dogpool. So when Deadpool first came out, I think that was still sort of when I was able to see R-rated movies for the first time. You know, I was 19, so I could have, you know, done them for a while, but it was still one of the first R-rated movies I really just went to go see in theaters. And it was such a good time because it was it was hilarious. It was it was original. It was still a sort of grounded superhero movie. It was meta. It just did new things. I hadn't really seen anything like it before. Man, I, I just I loved that movie. I wouldn't stop quoting it to the point where my friend was like, if I hear one more line from that movie, I'm going to flip a table. And then the second one came out and, you know, it, it wasn't as funny, but it still had a lot of great moments, a lot of great cameos. A lot of, it, again, it's just another fun experience in the theaters, and I would love to do a full review of the first, especially, and the second one at some point, but I think it's really interesting that a lot of these trilogies recently, especially with the MCU, they go, like, really strong first one, second one we also really like, but it's not as great, and then third one they just come out swinging with so much fun stuff. So then we get the wild announcement with the really funny ad for it that Deadpool 3 is going to finally include Wolverine, not only bringing Wolverine into the Deadpool universe, which he's made fun of him for so many years, but actually bringing Wolverine into the MCU, which is a huge deal. So you guys want to review this movie? Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go. Starting off with the highs, this movie is hilarious and so much fun. The movie has so many good lines that had me cracking up. There were sequences that had me crying. And I think that they did a very good job with the meta humor and incorporating that in a way that didn't make it confusing or break logic or continuity of the MCU already, addressing things that are happening in the MCU. It, I was wondering how they were going to do that in a world, you know, where nothing is, is meta, you know, everything takes itself seriously, and then you bring in this guy who's gonna address all this stuff, but then how do other characters from that universe interact with him without them knowing that they're being addressed? So I was wondering how they are gonna do that, and I think they did that pretty much the best that they could. And then obviously the Deadpool and Wolverine relationship, which is the core of this movie and what we've been building to for, I guess, two Deadpool movies, it was amazing because it was just so much fun to see this guy that Deadpool's been making fun of and ribbing on for, for years actually be in contact with him and, and have interactions with him and what that was going to be like, especially because one, you know, is, is the sassy, always talking, funny guy, and the other one's very serious, very angry all the time. It was cool to see how they were going to clash. There are many scenes in this movie where they do clash. There's a lot of fighting, and, and specifically there is a scene in a car that starts out like really, really well. There's like a, a, a whole monologue from Hugh Jackman that's really, really well done. And then the way that the scene ends implies it has some interesting implications. But Hugh Jackman could play this character forever and never miss. It's just, he just knows how to play it. I also think it's really interesting that he plays two types of characters in his acting career. It's either some historical figure who is very grandiose, very emotional, oftentimes sings, or Wolverine, which is the exact opposite. And lastly, the movie, again, it's just fun as hell. Not only is it funny, but they have so many things that make it so much fun. The metaverse humor, the inside jokes, the cameos. There's all this stuff that goes into it to make it one of those theater experiences where everybody is cheering and clapping and shocked and everyone's okay with everyone talking during the movie because it's it's one of those movies. And we haven't had that in a little bit. Probably realistically since Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home. Now, there is a little bit of a, of a caveat to the, the cameos part of this. Um, it, it is both a high and a low. It's not necessarily a middle because there's extreme highs to it, there's extreme lows to it, which I'll get to in a second. But the cameos were awesome. In the moment, you're like, holy shit. Now, 
this movie is hilarious as hell. It is also really, really stupid. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in this movie, logically, that just doesn't make sense, is really dumb. They amped up the goofiness for a lot of the movie a, a lot, even more than the first two Deadpools, which is saying a lot. It's like, I, I know it was supposed to be because it's very, very fun, but some of it just felt a little bit too goofy. And even the plot itself was a little bit meandering. It was kind of like, like, literally, they just kept walking towards a goal that was, like, should have been done halfway through the movie, and it's pretty much almost the whole movie. They came up with a plot somehow that basically doesn't really do anything. And that's, it's not terrible, which I'll get to in a minute, but it is still something that I was thinking about as the movie kept progressing. Also, I think that they made a pretty big mistake in getting rid of something from this movie that in and of itself was a, a very big high, and, and, and I, I want to say it's a high, but I don't want to tell you what that aspect is. The reason I think it was a mistake to get rid of it is because it felt like something that w wouldn't have fixed the MCU, but would have helped it move forward in this time of uncertainty and not knowing, you know, where it's going, or, you know, even Marvel knows where it's going. Um, that being said, these were thoughts that I had three days ago, um, before all of the the con uh, announcements came out, and I'm actually going to be putting out just a small video on my thoughts and all of that, so some of my thoughts from this movie have changed a little bit, or at least they're, they're not as much of a problem anymore, but I still do think that this one aspect of the movie should have been kept around uh, longer, because it is something that was really, really well done, and I'm just surprised they got rid of it just like that. I don't want to say this is necessarily a biggest low of the movie, because again, it is also high, but it's something that I would just want to talk about really quick, is the cameos and these inside jokes in this movie. The cameos themselves, very fun, made for a great experience. It's the general direction of where these movies are going and how these cameos are being used that I think is starting to get a little bit stale. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but with a lot of these multiverse movies, they bring in certain people, certain elements, certain jokes, and it's just, they're kind of brought up and then they're gone. I think the difference with the first three phases is that all of the inside jokes and things that they brought back, especially in things like Endgame, which was kind of one big inside joke, and, and Easter Egg, is that they were all self-referential to things that they had already set up within their own universe. Now that we have the multiverse, they can sort of just bring in whoever, whenever. And while that is very, very cool, it almost sort of feels like they're just ticking off boxes, you know, like, bring this guy in, bring that person in, bring this hero back. You know, they, they do whatever they're gonna do with them and then get rid of them. And it doesn't feel, it's there's no actual substance to it. You know, it, it doesn't feel like there's a reason for them being there. It's just like, wow, which again, in the moment, very, very fun. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. That's an experience I love to have. But after movie after movie where that happens, it's like, okay, well, you know, when is it actually going to mean something? Now, I do think that No Way Home did this very, very well, because outside of the fact that the cameos actually had a lot of stake in the movie, and it was important, and they were crucial to the plot, the movie, aside from them, was really, really well done. It was well scripted, it was emotional, it was powerful, it pushed things forward. Now again, I'm not going to blame this movie specifically, because if you're going to have a movie that does a lot of this stuff, but doesn't really, you know, come back around a lot or, or push a lot of things forward, it is going to be the Deadpool movie, because it's meta, it's it's referential to a lot of things, and, you know, it's somebody who, like, how, how do you continue this a lot through the MCU when, again, he can reference a lot of things, and it's, it's just supposed to be kind of a dumb superhero movie. It's supposed to be sort of that way. So I can accept it for this movie. The problem is, is when it's another in a long line of these movies, like Quantumania, Multiverse of Madness, that have been like, we're gonna set up a lot of stuff, we're gonna do a lot of stuff, and then it doesn't really have lasting impacts, it just feels like another one. You know, if this was the only one, we'd be like, whatever. And again, I'm a defender of after Endgame, and being like, listen, it wasn't gonna be immediate, they had to rebuild like they did with the first three phases, and that's totally fine. But at a certain point, you do have to start doing something that sticks and actually, like, progresses a story forward if you're not going to have 
you know, little Easter eggs. Like, the first three phases did have the luxury of se setting things up and we could have one-off stories while just incorporating little, you know, bits of stuff here and there. Now that it's established, you know, we, we've kind of, we, since we already know the world, it's like, all right, we want to get to the plot. We want to get to the main stuff. And because they introduced Kang so early, it was like, yeah, let's, let's go. Unfortunately, again, uh, that was derailed because of Jonathan Majors, so that was, um, well, it was a major disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so I can, th that wasn't their fault. That part of it wasn't their fault. Um, the stories that they made with him there, it was sort of their fault. So overall, Deadpool and Wolverine was a very fun experience. This was kind of like my Barbie of last year where I was very hyped for it. You know, it was, it was like, that's, that movie of the summer that I'm, I'm going to go get something to eat, I'm going to get something to drink, I'm going to go to the theater, I'm going to have a good time no matter what happens because I had high expectations, then I started hearing reviews, then I had lower expectations, but I was like, overall, I'm just going to have a good time. And it was. In the moment in this theater, it is a very fun, very hilarious experience. You just want to enjoy it. It is kind of like, a, I'm going <laughs> to akin this to uh, Zebra Gum because it, it's like, um, it's, it's very fun, very a lot of sugar and hype and everything in the moment and then very quickly after the movie ends you're like okay yeah well whatever i am very excited for things like thunderbolts and captain america coming up because i i, I need something to soak up all of the sugar you know i need something to like ground be very very grounded and have a lot of substance and i think those are going to do it but i think obviously both types of movies have their place so it doesn't have a ton of substance is it going to save the mcu no but I was very excited to have another theater experience like this again, where you can just cheer and clap and have a lot of fun with it. If it wasn't for the fact that this movie was so funny, I would be giving this probably a little bit of a lower score, but because it was so funny and, and hilarious and fun, I'm going to give Deadpool and Wolverine a 3 out of 4. Well guys, let me know what you thought of Deadpool and Wolverine without spoilers in the comments below. And let me know what you thought of it in terms of the other Deadpool movies, in terms of the other Wolverine movies and X-Men movies, and uh, generally how do you think that they did with introducing Deadpool and Wolverine and a lot of the stuff into the MCU? And, and how do you think they did with uh, a lot of the stuff that they've set up in other TV shows and movies and kind of incorporating all of these together? And as always, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and always use maximum effort. I'll see you guys later.